01 Taurus wagon. And of course, it gave up the ghost. The radiator gave up. And I had to have it towed. Yeah, over 230,000 miles and over 20 some years. I guess it's time. But even though I know what's wrong, I still like to know where it's leaking exactly. So I'll pressure test it. Because I don't like being a parts changer. I actually like to know what the hell's wrong. Not holding much pressure. But we'll check out and see where it's leaking. Well, looks like it's coming out that corner right there. Because I like bag. to see where it failed. Have to see, take the bottom cover off and see what happened. Where where this leak is at? It's most likely in the tank of the radiator because they're plastic. After 20 some years, you can it's see crack. under pressure, it's leaking like a sieve. So it's going to have to come out. It comes out the bottom too. So it's not a big deal. You have to get some electrical connectors out of the way. You have to take that bracket on the other end down there in order to get access to the lower control, the uh, lower hose actually, not the lower control arm. Good thing to check out your new radiator, make sure all the right spots, everything fits in the right place. Make sure, see these caps? Never throw these caps away, they're always good for use on something else. It's good that they have new fittings, new um, seals in there. So when you take the old one out, you don't have to worry about taking those out. Make sure the O-rings are right on there too. And it shouldn't leak at all. Because these can be a pain, these transmission ones. So make sure you have all the right stuff before you go putting it in. And get all you have to go I make mean, a run. A lot of these store. clamps you'll need definitely a lot of different tools, but uh, long you know 45 degree uh, needle nose helps out in little spaces like that right there. And over here, that's even tighter. That's going to take probably the, the other one that I have, the other ply that I have from Harbor Freight, which is cheap, but they do the job. Hard spots like this is a good reason why to have a variety of versions of hose clamp pliers, especially on modern cars. They always put them in the most inaccessible places. Well, this time, when it goes back, it ain't going to go back like, like it did before, that's for sure. All right, after you've gotten the upper hose off and the transmission upper line off and the uh, one vent, one uh, line for the bottle on the top of the radiator off, you have these two, one here and one on the other side. They hold the um, condenser to the uh, radiator. After you remove them, then you can take the bottom brackets off and lower the radiator. Okay, when you get to the bottom, a half inch or 13 millimeter speed wrench helps you out take this last uh, connector bracket for your radiator. You have to make sure you take out the ones for the uh, condenser up in here. Separate it from the radiator. Same thing on the other side. And then basically all it is is as you drop it down, make sure nothing gets caught. You don't break any of the lines. And it should slip right out. Now we'll take the lower transmission connection out as I take this out because it's easier to get access to put the tool in. As you can see I lowered it so I can get access to the lower transmission line. Take this clip off. It's just a little safety clip that they put on them. Put the uh, tool in that will remove it. There are two flat spots. You want the uh, actual pieces to be opposite those flat spots. So it disengages the ears inside there. It will be easier to put the other one on because all you have to do is push them in and they lock. 
eventually the line will come out as you can see and you can see the corrosion caused you know the outside corrosion that's what causes them to stick so hard I don't see what was wrong with the regular flare nuts that they used to have I don't know how this is an improvement over a wrench unscrewing a, a nut a flare nut I don't understand that but you know this is Ford's better idea before putting the reader back in make sure these bushings are up there on the upper core so to hold it in in the right place and then I just take a bungee to hold most of the stuff like the hose that's down here the little crossover line that comes across that holds it and holds the condenser away from the radiator so it's easier not to damage it and then raise it through there and we'll put start connecting everything that's gonna go back up nice and gentle watch where we're going because we don't want to damage the condenser leave the plugs on here so no dirt will get in at least a minimum amount Take your time, look around, make sure it's going right where it's supposed to go. And at this point, after you've got everything, put everything together loosely, the nuts on here, the bolts in there for the whole the uh, condenser together, upper ones, make sure everything is in first and started before you start tightening because if you tighten one side and then get up on top and you can't get it in you're gonna have to come back down again and fix it anyway so you might as well just leave everything loose and just work as you go and tighten everything up make sure everything clears hoses lines and we'll continue everything buttoned up Except for the bottom. I didn't put the splash shoe on the bottom because I'm going to check for leaks before I do anything. Now it's time to add the liquids. And we'll pressure test it to make sure that nothing is coming out. Then we'll run it. Check for leaks in the transmission lines. Make sure everything there is good. And good for another maybe 20 years. Okay, pressure test passed. All I need to do is check to see if there's no hydraulic leaks. Transmission lines are good. And I'm done. I just put back the splash shield. And off to another 20 years. Thanks for watching.